Let's go over some of the common issues you may run into when deploying the Focus One feature of the RFR app. The first thing you need to ensure when troubleshooting your Focus Wand is whether or not all of your devices are properly connected to the network and able to talk to one another. The console, any tethered augmented machine, as well as the wireless router, all need to be on the same network in order to communicate with one another. You'll also want to make sure that things like IP settings and subnets are configured properly so that the devices can see one another. If you have questions about how to get a network operational, check out our networking documentation. You'll want to make sure that you have strong enough Wi-Fi signal throughout the space wherever you're going to be using your IRFR or ARFR app. So you might want to download another app onto your phone and do a survey on signal strength in places you'll be using it. You also need to make sure that wireless remotes are enabled on your system. So there's a couple of places to check first in the application and then in the shell. Let's come into our setup area and check out all of the other settings that could affect whether or not Focus One is functioning. I wanna come down to my remote settings and make sure that allow remotes is enabled. If allow remotes is disabled, then the apps will not be able to connect to the console and you won't have any Focus One functionality. We next wanna check our augmented tab and make sure that at least a single device in our network has augmented enabled. The Focus One portion of the IRFR, ARFR apps talk directly to augmented, so this has to be enabled somewhere in the system for them to talk, and you need to have launched an augmented tab after startup in order for them to communicate. There are a few more settings that we wanna check out in our shell, so I'm going to go ahead and say exit, and that's gonna take me out to my shell area. So I'm gonna come into my settings and I wanna make sure I go into my network area. And under interface protocols, we just wanna ensure that whatever network port we're connected to has Wi-Fi remotes enabled. If they're disabled, just like in settings in the console software, you won't be allowed to have that device connect to your network. Don't forget up at the top, you have your console network settings. And again, those have to be in alignment with all the other devices that are running augmented, running your Wi-Fi, and your Wi-Fi connected device, such as your phone. So I'll hit accept, and I'm gonna come back into the EOS family software. I'm gonna go full screen here real quick, and I'm gonna go into edit mode a few things that we want to make sure are properly aligned really have to do with our AR targets. If our AR targets are in the wrong place, are misaligned or misoriented, then we're going to have bad results when we put our phone into our space because it will think that the phone is in a different location than it actually is. When I add a reference point, I'm just going to move it out of the way a little bit. When selecting an image, you can only use one per space, so make sure that you're not selecting the same one in multiple locations, as that will cause the system to malfunction. So for today, I'm just gonna pick four. Also keep in mind that these targets are scaled, so your paper size here is important, and when you export to PDF, and when you print, that paper size has to match through the whole process. If it doesn't, the scaling is going to be off between your model and your reality, and you'll get unfavored results. Another common issue is bringing in a target and not having it aligned properly. So if I look at this target on the deck, it currently has the bottom edge facing downstage. You can see that as I zoom in right there. And if I don't put it in the exact same orientation in reality, then my rig will be flipped around and I'll get undesired results. So make sure that you're aligning these properly. So for example, if I need that side to face upstage, I can use my rotation tools to quickly get it there. Remember that we keep promoting accuracy. Having things accurate in your model as they are in space is really important. All of this is really just math. So if you are not accurate either in your model or in your markings in reality, then the system's going to be off. So if you want predictable results, you need to put in predictable material. The reason we give you 10 of these AR targets is if you put more of them in your space, you get more opportunities to scan in. So as you're moving throughout your stage, 
having the ability to quickly scan in at a local location will help compensate for AR drift and make your experience more accurate. Let's check a few things on our phone. I'm gonna go into our iRFR app. And currently it says remote disconnected and I'm not finding a connection here. So I wanna double check that I'm on the correct Wi-Fi network, first of all. So I'm gonna go into my settings on my phone and I see that I am in fact on the incorrect network. So I'm gonna to switch to the right network there and let that connect up. And once that connects, I can go back into my app and double check my connection within the app here. So I'm not finding a connection here, so I need to double check that my console is online. So I will have Nick check that for me. Nick said he's got the console online now, so let's double check that. Okay, great, we're all connected up. So here I am able to control my fixtures. Yep, great. So I wanna go into my ML controls here, and I'm not seeing a wand tab down at the bottom. So I'm gonna check my about menu here in my app. Go to about, and it says here I've lost connection to server. So I'm going to need to make sure that Augmented is running on my system. Nick's got Augmented running on the console now, so we can see in about that we are connected. So I'm gonna go into ML controls, and I now have my wand tab down there at the bottom. All right, next up we're gonna scan back into our system. I'm gonna come down here and scan in. So those seem to be moving in the opposite way than I expect. So I'm going to double check that the AR target in my model is exactly the same as the one I have here in my space. It looks good in my space, so I think I'm gonna have Nick check it in the model for me. You can see that right now, the bottom of this target is facing downstage, when in reality, I'm gonna place that target upstage. So this is where your quick rotation tools come into effect. So I'm gonna come over to my blue, and click the 90 rotate twice. And now I've got my AR target exactly where I'm gonna place it in reality. Let's go ahead and scan back in. And we'll try this again. There we go, that looks much more like I would expect it to work. Great. Other scanning issues that may arise are not having enough light on your target or actually having too much light can be an issue as well. Also, some of the targets are blue, so if you have blue light in particular, they can not read very well. So try adjusting the light if you're having trouble scanning in as well. Another issue you may run into are having objects in your model that are not in your real space, which can cause your lights to appear to behave strangely. Here in Century Theater, we have these two pink lines taped out. The line closest to your screen at the bottom is our plaster line, and then the line at the top of your screen represents the downstage edge of our stage in the model. So here, if I move our lights from on our stage here, moving downstage, you'll see that they jump a little bit when they come on and off the stage. And what's happening, if you look at the model, is that they are skipping over the face of the stage because those lights can't physically hit that area in the model. Within the RFR app, we also have a tutorial that can help you find how to do some of these things. To find that, we're gonna to go to settings and about, and down at the bottom is a view focus one tutorial. As more features are added, these will be added to the tutorial. Thanks for joining us for these augmented videos. We hope that you all are as excited as we are about these new features of the software. And as you get settled into these features, don't forget to utilize our fabulous documentation and support, and stick with us. There are a lot more exciting features coming for augmented. From Middleton, I'm Nick. And I'm Rob. We'll see you at the next one.